On July 15th, we are doing a giveaway to celebrate 50,000 subscribers here on the channel. In collaboration with Saptic and then partnering up with Polestar as Polestar's recommended home charger, we are giving away two Saptic Go home chargers. To enter, simply subscribe to this channel and comment down below, I want a Saptic Go home charger. Thanks Saptic for sponsoring this video. In this video, we are going to find out how far the Kia EV9 all-wheel drive exclusive on 19-inch wheels can go on a full charge of battery. I tested this car back in winter when it was really cold outside and only got about 253 kilometers of range on the motorway at a constant 120 kilometers an hour or about 75 miles an hour. But today, conditions are a lot better, it being summer, so let's find out how far this car can go on the motorway. Finally guys, I am back in the Kia EV9. The last time I had one of these on loan, it was winter and really cold between minus 15 and 20 degrees Celsius. I was also in a GT Line version, that was the version that was launched late last year, and this time I am in a more efficient all-wheel drive exclusive model with a little bit less power. It also has smaller wheels, 19-inch wheels with narrower tires, so it should be more efficient either way. And also the conditions today, pretty nice. It is early June, so it is between 19 and 20 degrees Celsius outside. Dry roads, and though it is a little bit cloudy, the sun is popping out, but that means we don't have to run the AC as hard if it was sunny outside. The average consumption after almost half an hour on the road is also pretty low at 21.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. But there is one caveat. According to the wind map, we do have a push of six to seven meters in the northward direction, so a tailwind. So it remains to be seen once we hit our turnaround point, what the consumption is then, but maybe more importantly, once we get back what our consumption is then. I'm guessing it's going to rise. I don't think it's going to stay at that low 21.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers because this is a big, square, large, full-size seven row, seven row, seven seat, three row SUV. And it's not the most aerodynamic, but I'm pretty happy to be back in one of these again. This being the exclusive, it's not as fancy as the GT line on the inside I had back this winter, but it's actually pretty nice and pretty decent. And it's a lot cheaper. Here in Norway, this car equipped the way it is without, you know, the panoramic sunroof is 800,000 kroners or about 75,000 euros. And I think at this price point, yeah, this is a pretty decent deal. It's a lot of car for the money, but it remains to be seen. Are you going to get a lot of range for the money? So we'll see what the results of today's range test will be. We are now at our turnaround point here in Muelv. So we're going to exit and then we're going to go underneath the motorway and then we're going to head back south. So if we take a look at the average assumption, so 22.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers so it did climb a little bit as i you know uh, predicted but now we're going to head back south so we're going to see what the consumption will rise to you can see here from the trees on the roundabout it is a little bit windy it is a little bit windy but the big question is always how windy is it you know this car being as big it is as square it is i don't think it's going to really benefit from windy weather it's going to be more sensitive than other cars so let's head back south and for me it's gonna be about 45 50 minutes but for you guys it's just gonna be a few seconds before we are back at where we started this test we are now approaching our exit where we're gonna go and connect to a charger now and see what charging speed we get after an hour and 45 minutes on the road and keen viewers may have seen that we actually started this test this range test in a new location and there are a few reasons so first off there's construction at our normal location in so in Gardemoon so they've moved the exit or close the exit so it's just befitting to move it to where we can actually start you know right from the charters and also I don't have a 
chargers, charging sponsor, no charge point operator as a sponsor on the channel for the time being at least. I'm working with maybe getting another charging sponsor, but until then, I'm starting here at the Ionity Charters in Dahl because it's a lot cheaper for me with the Ionity Passport. Of course, it's nice for me to have options, especially on a long trip test, but since I don't have a charging sponsor on the channel, I have to pay all the charging out of pocket. And since I yeah, try to test as many cars as possible, I do drive a lot and I do range test and long trip test and having to pay all of that out of pocket at fast charters, yeah, that gets expensive quickly. So I'm a little bit sensitive to pricing when I don't have a, a sponsor on the channel. So that's why we're doing it at these Ionity charters because with the Ionity Passport, uh, like a subscription service, I can pay like three kroners per kilowatt hour or about 0 0.3, 0.27 euro cents per kilowatt hour. So let's see if there are any vacant charters here. So let's take a look at the actual average consumption thus far. So after an hour and 46, 47 minutes on the road, our average consumption is 25.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is a lot higher compared to our first update and also at our turnaround point, how much the consumption was then. So as I predicted, it was going to climb a lot and it did. So we've now connected to this charger here and we are at, I think 37 or 38% state of charge. This is a 350 kilowatt charger and the EV9 should be able to take a peak charging speed of 210 kilowatts on its 800 volt architecture. So compared to the other eGMP cars, the Ionic 5 and Ionic 6, they've actually dialed down the peak charging speed of this car to give it a flatter charging curve. And also there is manual preconditioning with this car, but in this test, we don't do any preconditioning at all. I do that in my long trip test. So this video, this test is all about getting the best efficiency and the most range possible. So we should be getting, you know, pretty decent speed because I think the battery pack is, should be at around 20 degrees Celsius to be at its optimal speed, but also being at 39% state of charge, we may not get that peak of 210 kilowatts, but let's see, it does keep on climbing and climbing now. 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, come on, come on, come on, 170, yeah, it's looking promising, 180, 290, I mean, not 200, I'm getting a little bit excited, 200, will we hit 210? Yeah, that is pretty good at 40% state of charge, hitting 200 kilowatts. No preconditioning, but ambient temperature outside between 18 and 20 degrees Celsius. That is actually, that's pretty good. That's impressive. Now let's take a look at the results. So if we take the usable battery capacity of this Kia EV9 all-wheel drive exclusive, it is 96 kilowatt hours. We take that number divided by the consumption, 25.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and then subtract 3% in heat loss. That gives us a theoretical range under today's conditions of 368 kilometers. And that is a lot, a lot better than what we got with this car in winter. Of course it is. Conditions today were pretty good, except for, you know, that powerful wind of about six to seven meters. If it was a little bit calmer, these are pretty much perfect conditions. A little bit cloudy, dry roads, and around 20 degrees Celsius is when you're gonna get the best range out of an electric car. So if it was maybe completely calm today, maybe we would have been able to get maybe 10 or 15 kilometers or more out of this car but as it is i'm pretty you know satisfied with the results of 368 kilometers that is real world range at a constant 120 kilometers an hour on the motorway and that is pretty good that is actually pretty good so i can't wait to test this car in my long trip test because that range 
it's going to be even better because in my long long trip test this the average speed is lower so that means you're going to be able to go further and i think the results we got today were pretty in line with what i got with the skoda enyaq vrs and that car did very well in that long trip test with slower charging so it's looking promising for this car just hope the weather is is nice when i do the trip and the test that day so guys let me know what you think about the results of the ev9 all-wheel drive exclusive are you satisfied with getting that range or do you think it should have done even better so i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content as always please subscribe see you guys around goodbye